Hey, it's your guy Tyrell back with the interviews. Atletico Madrid, Real Madrid, the Madrid derby. It doesn't get bigger than that besides El Clasico in Spain. However, with Barcelona running away with the title, this match seems like second is only up for grabs. Can Real cut the gap with Atletico? Can Atletico keep pace with Barcelona and put pressure on them with the La Liga games running down and thin? And what about Real? Can Ronaldo continue his goal scoring form? Can Atletico find a way to hit them on the counterattack? Who would win? How would they win? Then don't worry here at the interviews we've got you covered so on this edition of the interviews i'm going to briefly break down real madrid against atletico madrid So Real Madrid, Atletico Madrid, what should be a big game in Spain is looking more like a consolation game with Barcelona looking to wrap up the title. Real were looking to cut the gap with Atletico and finish in the top two, whereas Atletico were trying to keep pace with Barca and possibly looking to win the title, as Diego Simeone says. However, both sides had midweek games and you're expecting them to be a bit fatigued and energy levels to drop. Real looking at their second leg against Juventus. Atletico looking to wrap up their second leg Europa League game against Sporting. So here Real did make a few changes. We look at the board 4-4-2 against 4-4-2. Real in the blue. Atletico in the red. Real with Benzema and Ronaldo up front. Vasquez and Asensio on the flanks. Then midfield they had Cruz and they had Kovacic whereas Atletico were more, you could say 4 4 1 1, but it was still 4 4 2. Diego Costa up front, Griezmann a bit deeper. In midfield, they had Saul and Thomas Partey. And on the flanks, they had Vitolo and they had Koke. What do you expect from this game? Well, when you briefly break it down, we have Real dominating possession as this match has shown over the past few seasons and Atletico dropping a bit deeper. However, Real had a few issues here. One, they barely created any chats in the first half, they didn't get behind the Atletico Madrid defense. When you look at the chances that they created, a lot of them came from set pieces. Ronaldo getting the flick on from Bale on the corner kick, which forced Old Black into a save. You think about um, Varane's chance where the the free kick goes into the box. He doesn't get the first shot off well, but then he forces Old Black into a big save from point blank range. You think about Ronaldo's pile driver from 30 yards out, and their best opportunity came from the fullbacks when Marcelo gained a yard and he fired a shot off the crossbar, and then Carvajal forced Old Black into a save. So their best chances in the first half stem from their fullbacks. That's not what you expect from the Sri Madrid side. Why can they get past Atletico when you look at it? Atletico's shape was very well. Two narrow banks of four. Nothing could really be found in between the lines. They did that very well. Perhaps Real was missing a player like Isco who could float around, pull players out of positions, and try to get into those areas. However, Ronaldo and Bale didn't really get the ball in those areas. Vasquez and Asensio did drop a bit deeper and play a bit narrow, but they couldn't get into those areas either. And how basically Real were forced to play through the flanks. However, they were exceptional defending the flanks as well. Marcelo pushes over, Vitolo goes there. If one of the wide players, whether it be Vasquez or Asensio, goes wide, you have a fullback there. The same applies on the other flank, and they were very exceptional in that aspect. Then you had Griezmann sitting a bit deeper on Kovacic. You thought perhaps it'd be Cruz, but when Cruz got the ball in deeper positions, you'd have Saul kind of push forward to apply pressure on him. And then in these spaces, you had Thomas kind of pick up in case Vasquez dropped a bit deeper, in case Asensio dropped a bit deeper. So they were good in that aspect. Baylor Ronaldo often forced to drift out wide, and you would expect perhaps a 3v2 in that situation. But what it did lead to was that a midfielder would shift over 3v3. On the other flank, same thing. Shift over there, and they would ensure that no overloads were created in these spaces, so no real quality crosses were delivered into the box. And when they were delivered into the box, the center backs coped really well. So that's how Atletico kind of coped with that issue. Real didn't create any chances, like I said. But on the other aspect, with Casemiro out, uh, Real did suffer in midfield, sort of. There were warning signs in the first peer, in the first half, and when you look at it, if we drop these guys a bit deeper, 
push the wingers back into their position. One area was that, again, in between the lines, no Casemiro. You kind of look at it when Cruz and Modric are playing. They have the creativity to break down teams, but they can be overrun. Kovacic didn't really offer anything here as well in terms of providing that balance in midfield. And uh, let's go's two best chances stems from playing balls in between the lines and playing into Costa. The first opportunity was their best opportunity. It's Thomas Partey. No real press on him from deep. We'll kind of get everyone back into shape here. Thomas Partey, no real press from deep. We have Griezmann drop a bit deeper. And then we have Koke drifting from the left into that space. Picks up the ball. Thomas plays the pass in. The problem without having a proper natural center defensive midfielder is that sometimes it forces the center backs to push forward. We think about Vincent Kompany's time at Manchester City. His best spell is when De Jong and Barry were in front of him. And since those two left, you often see him making mistakes doing that. Ramos and Varane were guilty of that here. Pushing forward, stepping to Koke, and then Costa playing off him. So Koke instantly plays the ball free to Costa. Costa's free to break in on goal, should score, forces Navas into a near post save for a corner kick, needs to do better there. Costa got another opportunity. They were closer to the box this time, and it was now pressure being applied to Thomas. Vasquez steps in, he turns him. You have Saul dropping into that space, plays a pass into him, and then he finds Costa on the edge of the box, but the ball bounces off his foot, and they don't get a shot off there. But that was the warning side in between the lines. Besides that, when you look at Letico's play, they didn't really get much from transition in terms of them really sustaining the ball and retaining possession that didn't happen for lengthy periods and Costa trying to run the channels didn't really work in that favor as well because Varane was running with him and ensuring that he can match him pace for pace and he could cope with Costa's physicality when you look at the second half that's when Real had about of a five to maybe seven minute spell where they exploited Atletico on the counterattack. how do they do that or in transition they had three opportunities. The first one led to a goal. Um, Saul loses possession in midfield. Asensio combines with Bale, who charges into space behind Juan Fran. That forces Savage out. Doesn't get close enough to Bale. The center back is then forced to switch it there. Lucas Fernandez, the makeshift left back, has to step in. He misjudges the cross. It falls to Ronaldo. A side uh, volley into the ball, into the goal past Oblak. 23rd goal of the season, second in the Pachichi charts. Ronaldo puts them ahead. And that was the same template for Real's next two best chances of the half. It's Bale again charging into that space, picking up the ball behind Juan Fran. So then that forces that forces Savage to come out and then what happens is that Asensio makes a run into that space gets the ball Ronaldo breaking in but the pullback just goes past Ronaldo a great opportunity there to double their lead doesn't happen and the final opportunity again it's Asensio combining with Bale again charging into that space behind Juan Fran who was out of position for, during that period way too often Savage again doesn't get close to his marker perhaps being afraid to get beaten by Bale pace for pace 1v1 cross into the box goes through and just evades Ronaldo but that was a big period for to put the game to bed when Atletico fell asleep it didn't happen and Atletico responded very well and their goal again just highlights Real's lack of concentration and it's been something that's happened throughout the season and again where's the midfield where is the destroyer in that space to really stop them you look at the opportunity Real are a bit deeper here wide players are here you could bring Ronaldo and Bale back a bit and what we have is Costa sitting into this area. Griezmann pulls into that area. You also have Vitolo there as well. And what happens is that Thomas, a pass is played into the space behind Thomas. No one steps to him. So Ramos steps. What happens is that Thomas finds the ball into Griezmann. And then Vitolo charges into this space here. Vitolo, no one marks him. Marcelo watches him go by. The keeper comes out. Pulls it back for Griezmann, taps it in, 1-1 one, one Atletico. But again, who is covering that space? What is happening to that Real midfield? No one is stepping to Thomas. No one is tracking Griezmann. No one is tracking Vitolo. Ramos is caught out of position. Marcelo is ball watching, 1-1 one, one Atletico. They exploit that space. And their next two best chances of the game stem from counterattacks, where they simply, the first one was a well-worked move. All the attackers touch the ball. Leads to Koke forcing Navas into a big save. And the second 
second one was a genuine electrical counterattack. We got to push these guys a bit forward. We got to get the wide players out there. And what happens is just Griezmann dropping a bit deeper, Ramos stepping with him and Kovacic. He gets past both of them, slides ball, slides the ball into Saul. Costa runs, cover is there. Perhaps he should slide the ball into Costa, slides his effort inches wide of the post, probably should score, doesn't. Then the changes happen. Benzema replaces Ronaldo. Nothing really comes from that. Benzema doesn't offer much in that sense. The shape is the same. You see um, Correa coming for Vitolo. Nothing really changes there. Atletico just got a bit deeper as the game wore on. Throughout the game, we did see Koke and Saul switch positions, kind of moving out from wide midfield and switching in places into the center of the pitch. And that happened. And then after that, we saw Gabi replace Costa. And what happened was that Correa moved up front. Saul moved to the flank. And then we had Gabi and Thomas in midfield. Then you had Koke and Saul on the flanks. And Real did turn to Isco. They did turn to Modric late on in the game. What happened there was that now we had the wide players a bit holding the flank. Vasquez holding the flank. Marcelo pushing forward. They were trying to create space for Isco to find to get space into that area. Nothing was really created. Real's best chance came from in the final stage of the game came from a Ramos free kick, 30 yards, forced Oblak into a save over the net. But besides that, Real couldn't create enough chances. They had that five to seven minute spell where Bale exploited space behind Juan Fran. They got one goal, probably should have got more. Atletico found space in behind the midfield without Casemiro there, and they exploited it, and they finally got a goal. No one picked up Thomas. Griezmann was a threat on the counterattack. Towards the end of the game, more so in the second half, midway through, and the end of the first half. And when you look at it, Real couldn't really breach that deep, organized Atletico Madrid backline. And when you look at it, they're probably going to finish behind Atletico, whereas Atletico's title hopes are saved for another week. Can they catch Barcelona? Probably not. But this was a great moral, vic moral draw for them, and possibly they'll be feeling like they should have got more. But let me know what you guys think. Meet me in the comments below. Don't forget, I upload videos every day, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And that was your Daily Dose of the Interviews. Thank <laughs> you.